Welcome everybody to this new tutorial. We will create this fully functional game where you can fly an airplane and shoot balloons to increase your score. It will take us about one and a half hour to create this game completely from scratch. So let's get going. We start by going to the Unity Hub and creating a new project. Um, a 3D URP project and let's call it Heroes of the Sky. Okay, let's start by importing some um, assets from the asset store that we will use in our game. This will all be free assets. The first one is uh, the simple airplane controller. You can find the URL over here. Um, this will give us some um, controls for the plane, so we don't need to write them ourselves. Then next we have the low poly environment from which we will take some trees for the environment and the ground package from Ux uh, for the grass textures and uh, for the special effects we will use uh, war effects and also effect textures and prefabs. We will take a rocket from this package and uh, we will take the sound from this package and this package we will use as a, for the skybox and then we have uh, the 3d model uh, that we will use as a plane it's this one from turbo squid it's a free it's a very nice one and uh, from free3d.com i will take this hot air balloon so let's start by uh, importing these uh, you need to purchase them i already did that so I've already downloaded it as well, so I can just hit import and then import everything into my uh, project. When you're done importing all the uh, assets, they, you can all find them all over here. So um, I've already imported most of them. The only thing I still need to do is import the um, 3d models so I'm gonna create a folder called airplane and uh, I'm gonna unpack the downloaded zip and just put the model of the airplane in this folder It's the FBX model and some textures. We can now uh, extract the uh, material from it into this folder so we can edit it. Um, so let's take a look at this plane. And I think the base material is the one that's used for the wings and stuff. So yeah, we can put a texture on that. We can also put this bump map on the normal map. And you see that we have now even more details on the plane. Uh, we could give it some kind of a metallic look. Like this, I think looks more nice. Um, and um, also for the glass let's make that uh, bluish and also let's make that transparent lower the alpha value so it becomes transparent okay um want to maybe give it a metallic look as well and smoothen it 
something like this um, I think this is the propeller give it a brownish color and then for the tires something gray and also very metallic okay cool so this is a nice plane uh, and now we're gonna import the uh, balloon so create a folder for it and uh, extract we're also going to import the balloon let's create a folder for it let's call it balloon and uh, extract the zip There are some pictures in here, but we only need the FBX. We can again extract the materials and we can uh, give them a color. Um, actually, Let's give this a uh, kind of a metallic look. I think that looks quite nice. Okay, let's start with an empty scene. So I'm gonna create a new scene like this. Call it um, scene one. I'm gonna open it. Let's delete this one. And it's got a main camera and directional light. And now we're gonna add the um, airplane controller. So over here is the airplane controller. I'm gonna drag it into the scene. And um, I'm gonna run the game and let's see how it looks like. Well, nothing happens yet and this airplane controller comes with its own camera so we can delete the main camera and it will use the camera of the airplane controller instead so now it's working and we see the controls we can use them with the keyboard it's quite nice uh, only the plane is not that great so the first thing we'll, we'll do now is replace that uh, plane by our own so uh, let's take our let's open this and actually let's first unpack it completely so it's no longer a prefab and now we can uh, take our plane and put it uh, in here somewhere so this is the original airplane and now I've got my airplane just next to it if we run the game again you'll see them both so you just immediately see the difference that the plane that I created or actually downloaded is much nicer so um, let's just uh, I saw that the uh, the propeller is moving so it's probably been moved by the script um, so the propelled controller has a script over here and it also has propellers that you can put in here and the script will make sure that they will move so let's um, drag in our propeller uh, that's over here actually we can use this prop tip probably that can if that rotates the propeller will rotate as well so let's 
um, put this prop tip into the propeller slot over there so we now run the game again let's see what happens so now uh, the propeller on my uh, plane uh, is rotating now I think we can get rid of the uh, the other airplane now so that leaves us just with our own airplane I see that they have some colliders in here which they use to detect collision but they are a little bit um, not in the right position now my plane is a bit different so we need to um, adjust them otherwise we will have problems with the uh, collision detection so this is supposed to be the wing the original plane had two wings this one has only one so let's put it in here okay I think this is sufficient so now um, we have an airplane we can fly it but we don't have uh, a scene yet so the next step will be to create a scene so our pl plane will fly over a nice landscape um, the first thing is the easy part is just to uh, to change the skybox go to the environment and we select a different skybox one from the, the fantasy skybox series um, I think this one will look all right for the type of uh, atmosphere I want to create so and the next thing we will do is um, use the terrain editor so we need to add that to um, our uh, project go to the package manager unity registry and let's take the terrain tools and uh, uh, install them I've already installed it here so I don't need to do anything now but you need to hit install over here so once that's done you will have uh, the terrain tools over here terrain toolbox and also this button edit noise we're going to use this button to generate uh, some hills on the terrain so it generates just noise as you can see over here let's use uh, a different scale I think about maybe 12 and I think we can uh, export this to a texture give it a high resolution something like this and export it uh, we can export it just in our asset folder we can later delete it but uh, we will use it during terrain generation so now it's over here and we can uh, use it inside the terrain toolbox let's create a large terrain of let's say 4 kilometers by 4 kilometers 
terrain height 600 starting position should be uh, minus 2000 then and uh, on the C and the X axis that's because I like to have the the zero zero uh, location in the center so the plane is now I think also in zero zero location so then the plane will be in the center of the terrain already it's just handy um, and we will use uh, an height map and we will use uh, this noise texture for that so I think take the highest resolution for the height map and let's create a terrain actually our plane is now beneath the terrain so we should move it up a little bit I don't know maybe 300 or something let's see Control F yeah now it's at least above the terrain um, the terrain is very hilly that looks good it's about what I want I think if I think maybe it's a bit too steep all the hills what you can do now is uh, go to the generated terrain and there is this option to adjust the settings so you could lower this to for example 100 now you can see there's not much left of the height so we can um, take it to let's say 500 something like this yeah I want to have something like hills but not extreme high so this is fine I think you can see that this terrain is a bit blocky um, it's almost like Minecraft kind of terrain we will change that in a minute so we select the terrain and um, go to the inspector uh, we go to smooth height we're gonna use a very large brush you can set it even larger if you want I think something like this will do for now um, and it's important that the brush strength is uh, not too high but also not too low but one works quite well now I'm gonna go over the terrain and it'll smoothen it out but still keep the hills so I can change the view to the top and just go over all of the terrain to uh, smoothen things out only one thing that's weird now is the controls if I press left and mouse uh, left and right uh, buttons the plane the camera is swinging around very strange um, I see what's the problem I accidentally uh, changed the position of this uh, game object to put the plane in the sky but I should use uh, the main object of course so that everything will move and there you go now it's working okay nice I think only the plane is flying way too slow fortunately there are properties here to change the speed so let's make the default speed 100 
Now I think this is uh, fast enough, so we don't need to change the script to make it even faster. All right, um, so now let's add a texture to this terrain. Going to the properties of the terrain and choose paint texture. We now need to add a few layers. We need to create some layers, so let's create a layer called grass. Uh, and I'm gonna use the textures from the ground texture package for that. I think this is a nice one. It's called Diffuse Grass 05. So let's select that one. Diffuse Grass they're all called diffuse, so it's a little bit difficult to pick the right one, but this is the one I want. Okay, let's zoom in and see how this looks. You can see the repetition on this grass. Um, so that's not so nice. So if we scale it up a little bit, it probably look nicer and you don't see the repetition that much so let's double click this grass then we go to the grass material and change the scale to let's say 10 okay better and also let's give it a little bit a metallic look so it's a bit shiny okay after we put the um, trees on the terrain we can check if it's looking good or if we still want to change it a little bit so let's add the trees going back to the um, terrain uh, in the inspector select this button and we need to add some trees um, before we can do that we need to um, take a look at the package that we're using for trees it's the uh, polytope studio low poly environment these uh, are not uh, designed to be used with URP but they have this package that you can run and now uh, you need to import it actually I think I've already run it now so uh, after you've done that it's possible to use the trees from the package and uh, for UOP so uh, now we can add a tree uh, and find those trees from the low poly package we're gonna take these fruit trees you need to add them one by one unfortunately I don't think there's another way I think these trees are all slightly different and There are also some pine trees, so let's add these as well. We're gonna make sure that the ratio of pine trees and uh, normal trees is uh, kind of similar, so I'm gonna add four types of pine trees as well. So now we can mass place the trees. Uh, let's put 1000 down. Okay, I think they're a bit small. Um, so we need to scale them up. So let's do that now. Um, if we go to the pine trees, and uh, we can go by clicking, double clicking on the text. Um, I think we can select all of these. Go to the model and set the scale factor to uh, to two, for example. Um, 
because if you set it to one it's just way too small so set it to two and we need definitely more trees than this so let's add a bit more go back to the terrain toolbox and uh, out to the inspector and mass place like 100,000 trees let's see what this looks like when we're playing the game okay I think that's, uh, that's about it uh, I want to have slightly more trees so I'm gonna mass place trees I'm gonna replace it and let's use uh, 150,000 instead maybe even more 200,000 And uh, you can still see a lot of the terrain uh, that looks kind of grassy now. I think I want to change that a little bit and go to the paint texture. First of all, change this, uh, make it even more shiny, so it will stick out a little bit from the uh, from the trees. And now I'm also going to add a second uh, a second layer. Let's call that one uh, ground. And let's use this texture for that. Um, we can paint it a little bit like this. I think that's fine only uh, also for this uh, ground texture I want to change the scale of the uh, the textures so if we now just put a little bit of this texture inside the map it's gonna look more uh, more interesting And also when uh, double click this ground we can change the size to 10 and 10 let's create an area of this uh, texture to see what that looks like Yeah, it doesn't look that repetitive as the uh, the lower scale. So I'm gonna stick with this. Um, another thing I want to change is uh, the. direction of the light the direction of the light is very important for the how the game looks we're gonna change the direction and the intensity of the light um, I need to rotate this light a little bit it's now over here let's just put it um, somewhere over here 
Um, actually, I was trying to change the position. So if we now play with it, you can see what happens. The most uh, interesting result is when uh, the light is creating uh, quite a bit of shadow on the trees, but that doesn't get too dark. So something like this. Actually, I think uh, these values that I still recall are quite uh, good to work with. You now have a nice um, shadow. Also, we want to change the light a little bit. I think the color, I want to have it a little bit more yellow, so it gives a bit more uh, atmosphere. And the intensity, I'm going to increase to 4. This is uh, making the trees uh, shine a bit more. And then um, we also want to have a little bit of fog, I think, in the distance. Just a little bit, not too much. So let's go to lighting and change the fog settings. We're gonna um, enable fog if it's not enabled yet. Uh, exponential squared, that's fine. Only just let's this decrease this to say about this much and also let's make the fog a little bit darker like this I think okay and this looks a lot better in my opinion so now at the foreground we have a lot of light and at the back we have like this dark hills the next thing we're gonna do is add some rockets to the plane that we can then fire um, this is the game object of the plane itself and let's create some uh, child objects and let's call them rocket uh, spawn position left and rocket spawn position right like this and uh, now let's position them a little bit um, make sure they are a child of uh, the plane because we want to have them moving with the plane when the wings move, for example, up and down. These uh, spawn positions move along with it. So, I'm gonna create two spawn positions for each uh, wing so we can place the rockets under the wing. And now let's add a rocket to it to see what it looks like. I got these rockets here from this rockets package and uh, I'm gonna add a rocket. I'm gonna add it to the zero position. And I see some problems now because this rocket is probably way too big. So that's one thing we need to fix. Um, and so let's first fix that by uh, decreasing the scale. Something like this, maybe. Now we can at least see the plane again. But it's still way too big. I have to add another zero there, I think. Okay, this is better. We see that the rocket is oriented not in the right way. We want to uh, have it pointing forward, but it's pointing up. We could, of course, rotate this rocket like this, 
but uh, if we do that um, let's actually do that now so this is the right orientation for the rocket but uh, as soon as you start doing that it's good to add uh, a new game objects in between let's call this uh, rocket and put this one inside that game object we will create a prefab out of this and then um, if we shoot the rocket forward it still will the forward direction will still be this direction uh, if we just rotate this and use this object the forward direction will be pointing down so if we then shoot the rocket forward it will shoot down so that will be a bit confusing so uh, just to prevent confusion and to have the to, to change the uh, direction the rocket is firing we can uh, uh, change uh, create uh, uh, this object in between so now um, let's uh, make this a zero position and we want to uh, so this is zero as well now we can just uh, change this object to the right position and that will be the spawn position so this this object will stay on the plane and this one will be created every time as a child of uh, of this spawn position and then we have a rocket in the right place uh, so something like this okay I think this is the proper uh, position for the spawning of the rockets Actually, you see that only the C axis is minus for the uh, other wing. And uh, also make sure that these uh, positions are at zero. Because we will use that for our prefab. What you can also do if you like uh, is to change the rocket to make it look also metallic. I just love metallic so... Now that we are done creating the proper position, we can create a, a prefab for this rocket and then remove uh, these rockets from the wings. And the next thing we will do is to add a script to the rocket so we can make it move. Um, therefore I'm creating this uh, folder called scripts for this uh, small project I'll keep uh, all the scripts in one folder if you have a larger script you may want to have a different hierarchy so let's create a script called uh, rocket over here and uh, let's attach that to the uh, to the prefab the first thing we need to do is change this uh, create this rocket script I've added uh, a speed uh, variable which we can change from within the editor I've also added this uh, boolean is moving which indicates if the rocket is moving if it's been shot from the wing and if it is moving then uh, we just move the transform forward with uh, the speed so uh, we can use this variable to set it from within this uh, airplane controller script and then in that way we can just make the rocket move and shoot away from the plane so um, if you look at the existing uh, airplane controller uh, code uh, it's over here i've added this function update rockets it's a bit similar to the movement uh, function which you see over here um, they uh, read out keys <coughs> and if this key is pressed uh, they rotate the uh, 
the plane and I using the um, the space bar if the space bar is pressed I want to release only one rocket so I keep a boolean to keep track of if the space bar is pressed or not <clears throat> so every time uh, the space bar is pressed again we end up in this code and we uh, can uh, fire the rocket if it's not been fired yet so if we fire it we record the time that it's been fired and we also uh, disconnect it from the plane so we set the parent to zero um, this variable keeps track of which rocket we are using the left or the right wing um, so this one is also used in the uh, instantiating of the uh, the objects <coughs> with this code we can create a, a rocket on the right or the left wing we're also going to name it to, so it for debugging purposes we can see in the editor if we are talking about the left or the right uh, rocket we set the parent to the airplane and that's what we created the rocket and when we fire it uh, we're just gonna set this is moving to true and then after the rocket has been fired uh, we will no longer have a rocket on that side of the wing so we need to respawn them from time to time so that's what this uh, loop is doing we're going to both positions of the rocket if there is no rocket yet and the, the time rocket fired has passed then we will create a new rocket on the wing and at the start of the script when the script is um, first uh, accessed we're gonna create uh, already two rockets on each wing so we have a rocket to start with um, after you have saved these scripts we can go to the propelled controller in the scene and we can assign the uh, prefab of the rocket and the spawn positions actually there is one small thing we need to do because we uh, just uh, created uh, the prefabs in this position you will notice that uh, this is a, a child object of this plane which has a certain scale and a rotation so uh, but we if you go to the script in the airplane controller I've just parented this uh, rocket to this uh, controller script so the rockets will be created uh, over here on the same level as the engine sound so then they will be outside of this uh, scaled object so we need to compensate for that um, so if we open the prefab we can change this scale to make it uh, 100 times bigger and also we need to at this minus 90 rotation again now we can save this prefab again and uh, the rocket should appear uh, at the right size and rotation yes we can see that the rockets have been spawned but this time from a script that's really nice and now if we press spacebar we can actually uh, shoot the rockets they uh, move away from the plane you can also see over here in the scene that they are no longer uh, attached to the wings what we can do to make it even a bit more interesting is to also give uh, a rotation to this uh, rocket so it spins uh, when we shoot it away
we also always need to take uh, the delta time into account because uh, we are working with the update function here and that depends on the frame rate how many times this update function is called so if you want to have uh, um, something that's rotating uh, the same speed all the time then you need to take this delta time into account I have improved the uh, rocket script a bit more actually we don't need this initialization methods um, I've added a lifetime so the rockets won't uh, exist forever this would uh, give us performance issues of course so uh, after uh, um, 20 seconds the rockets are destroyed also um, I've added the rotation a little bit to make the rocket appear more interesting and I've uh, added a points to this rocket uh, as long as the rocket exists the more points it will generate because later we will add a score and then it will be nice that the score is not just uh, adding one every time we hit an object but it depends on how far you shoot if you shoot objects more far away and you hit them they will be worth more points because it's more difficult to do it like that so that's just something for future um, so let's now save this and we have this uh, uh, rocket uh, smoke effect which we instantiate uh, every so often so if we now go to the rocket we can also set the smoke effect and we're gonna choose the war effect package I'm gonna use this one and we can check out how it looks now I think I'm gonna set the scale a bit bigger so let's go to this uh, effect and change the scale make it twice as big uh, it's saved automatically so I'm gonna check out how it looks now okay I think that's fine I've also added uh, a sound and uh, a visual effect to the airplane so we can use that to fire the rocket it's these two um, variables and we use them over here so we play the sound and we instantiate this effect as soon as we are shooting a rocket so now let's uh, fill in those uh, properties for the visual effect I'm going again to the war effect package and I'm gonna use uh, explosions let's use this one explosive smoke big and for the sound of the rocket fire I have uh, included this uh, rocket launcher from Big Rook Games. It has some audio in it. So, this we can use for the firing of the rocket. Therefore, I'm gonna add uh, a game object. Let's call it uh, a rocket sound. place it just next to engine sound and uh, add the rocket launcher sound to that game object and now we can add this game object 
over here so we can refer to it from within the script so let's see if it works we see the visual effect Okay, the visual effect works and the audio is now muted so let's unmute it in the editor and then we will be able to hear that as well there you go I have this image of uh, crosshair which I created earlier it's just a PNG with transparency and I'm gonna uh, create a folder called crosshair in my assets I'll drag it into here and I'll change this to a sprite and then um, I'm gonna create a game object inside my propelled controller let's call it crosshair and put the sprite in here actually we can get rid of this object Let's call this one crosshair um, and let's set the location to C minus 40 uh, actually C40 I think it should be in front of the, the plane somewhere I think this is fine let's have a look if we can see this crosshair on the screen now it's a sprite renderer so it will be rendered in 3D uh, 2D so actually I don't see it yet so but it's probably too small let's change the scale a little bit okay now it's visible I think it's just about the right size so now we have a crosshair that gives us an indication that we have to fire too The next thing we're going to do is create some targets to shoot at. Um, we're going to use the balloon for that. So I will make a prefab out of this balloon by dragging it into the scene and back into the assets. And let's open this prefab. You see that there's some lights inside and a camera. I don't want to use that, so we'll remove them. We'll just use this cube, this sphere, and this circle. Alright, it's saved automatically, so I can go back. And now we should spawn these uh, balloons, a number of these balloons in the scene. I'm going to remove this one, and uh, fortunately, I already have uh, a generic spawn script which I created in another game. Uh, I'm going to use that. I'm going to put it in scripts and then also into the scene create an empty game object called scripts and inside here I'm going to create another game object called balloon Corner. So I'm going to attach the script to this game object and uh, now as soon as the scene is starting the spawning script will be executed. Um, you can use the script to spawn uh, items over time, we will not use that, but we will use the initial items. Let's try out with 50, 
we can set the, the range of the terrain where we will spawn. Remember our terrain was uh, 4000 meters, so we start at minus 2000 until 2000. And then we are spawning items randomly at a position anywhere on this map. The height is minimum 100 and maximum 200. The spawn script samples the terrain, so this is 100 meter above the terrain. So if you are on a hill, it will be 100 meter higher. So uh, now all we need to do is add the prefab to the list of to spawning items. And now try see what happens. Okay. We see that uh, we have now um, 50 balloons being spawned. We can make that a little bit bigger, let's say 500. Then we have enough targets. Okay, cool. And now what we need to do is uh, add a script to the prefab. Um, so we're going to the scripts folder and gonna create another script called um, balloon so here's how the script will look like I've added uh, a transform for the some hit effect which we will show as soon as the balloon is hit and then we uh, rotate the balloon uh, all the time just to make it look more interesting and as soon as we are hitting um, a target we enter this on trigger function we check if it's a rocket that has hit the item and if it's a rocket then we instantiate this uh, effect so uh, let's uh, test that out um, first we need to uh, Select an if effect to show on the. Uh, but first, we need also to add the balloon script to the prefab. And as soon as I save this, we will have that uh, effect variable of exposed. And I'm gonna use the. Uh, Uh, effect textures and prefabs for that for example this one the heart um, let's see uh, how this will look if this hits the balloon uh, by the way I also uh, used uh, an hit effect spawn position um, because we want uh, the effect to show up at the right place so if we go in here we can add uh, this hit effect spawn position and we can set it maybe somewhere over here so um, now as soon as the balloon is hit the spawn uh, the, the effect will show up here so that's cool so uh, to test this I'm gonna perform this uh, instantiation of the effect already at awake so it will already be on the balloon as soon as we start the game now so we can see what it looks like Okay, we don't see anything yet, but we can see that uh, the hearts are spawned. So I probably think they are too small to be visible. So let's just uh, for temporarily remove this uh, balloon sphere. So we can have a good look at the spawn position of the, uh, the hearts. 
and now you can see that uh, the heart is spawned but uh, it's too small it's just inside the balloon all the time so we couldn't see it before so what we can do is to um, put this sphere back and go to the uh, to the heart uh, prefab and change the scale so let's make it a bit bigger like 40 or so okay now I uh, think that's a uh, proper size for the effect so as soon as we hit the balloon we want uh, also to destroy the balloon itself and we want to destroy the rocket so that's what we're doing over here let's remove this initial instantiating of that effect and um, now we're gonna test if it works when we fire a rocket on a balloon but therefore we first need to change the balloon we need to add uh, a rigid body to it and also a collider let's use a sphere collider i think a sphere represents the uh, shape of the balloon the best so actually now it's a very small collider but we need to have something like this okay this is the proper size of the um, collider i think uh, we also need to make it a trigger because it will be triggered by um, the collision and then we will enter this on trigger enter method so uh, now we also need to set up a collider for the uh, for the rocket I've already done that I can set up a box collider and give it the proper dimensions as well and then we can uh, detect collision but we uh, want to collect the, the uh, collision only between the uh, rocket and the, um, the targets so to do that we will make uh, a layers so I'm gonna create a few layers let's call the first one player this is gonna be the airplane because that's where you play with uh, the target that's gonna be the balloon it's our game targets and the rocket will also have uh, his own layer so now we need to set the, the, the layers so we're gonna set the propelled controller to the player layer um, and the balloon prefab is gonna be um, target layer and um, the rockets of course will be rocket layer so now we can go to uh, edit project settings physics and here you have a matrix of what can collide with what the rocket layer can only collide with the target the other collisions we don't want to detect and actually this will increase performance as well uh, also we don't want to uh, detect collision between the the player and the rocket well that's already not detected and we can also choose to uh, not detect the collision between the balloon and the player so then you can fly through the balloon it makes it a bit easier for now okay I think this is the proper collision matrix so let's test it in order to do this you could probably uh, decrease this 
speed of the airplane but we can see that it's working I hit the uh, the balloon and uh, the it's now gone away but you can see this effect keeps on playing it's not deleted so we need to do something about that also from an earlier project I got this delete after delay script it can be applied to many objects we're gonna attach this to the uh, effect prefab so then uh, this uh, heart effect will be deleted after let's say one or two seconds something like that um, so this prefab is over here um, heart And I'll go back to the script and attach this delete after delay. Let's use two seconds. So now uh, this uh, effect will also be properly deleted after the balloon has been hit. We're gonna add the sound to the balloon as well. Um, you can attach the sound to either the balloon or the rocket. So in this case, we're gonna use the balloon for it we could of course insert it into the prefab as we have done with the player with the plane sound but um, in this case I'm gonna add it into the scene over here so let's see how that looks like um, I'm going to create uh, an empty game object called sounds and I'm going to add uh, another game object and call it rocket explosion and over here I'm going to attach my uh, sound that's the one from the um, The bazooka that was over here somewhere this is the shooting sound and this is the explosion so we're gonna put the explosion over here um, you want to disable play on awake because we don't want the sound to play as soon as the scene is starting um, and now this script can find uh, this uh, sound in the scene at this position and it doesn't need to uh, instantiate it every time with the prefab so this might increase performance so let's test it going to create a user interface for this uh, game uh, we have uh, installed from the unity registry TextMess Pro make sure you also install the uh, essentials that come along with it and then we can uh, create a, a UI object a TextMess Pro let's call it score um, and we can uh, make it auto size and let's move it to the upper right corner let's anchor it in the upper right corner and let's set an example text over here 
something like this we will choose a font for it I'm gonna choose this one I've also added uh, outline and you can find it over here outline and set the thickness to anything you like for example this now we can uh, also set um, a gradient color on, on this uh, text let's use just two colors one for the top and one for the bottom let's try something for example this and now let's copy this um, text and um, move this one to the other corner and uh, this will be the time left it will be something like this uh, and let's make that one a bit smaller and also give it a different color so now um, we can call this uh, time left and we can start to uh, make this uh, into real values in order to keep track of the score and the time we will uh, introduce a new script this will be the final script that we will create in this tutorial I'm calling it game and I'm gonna add it to the scene I'm gonna create a new game object over here call it game and attach the script to it so the script will be available everywhere in the scene we could of course attach the score to the player object that would be sensible and there could be more players and they could all have their own score but for now this game is a single player and uh, so we can just use it like this and uh, add it to the game object over here the code for the, the game class looks like this we have a score we have the time that's left and we have the time we started when we open the scene we will record the time and then we will display how much time is left after 100 seconds the time is zero and um, the game will end we will build that part later and we will display the time and the score we will have this method increase score which we will call as soon as we are uh, hitting a balloon so all we need to do here is now add this library and save it now let's uh, see if it works um, of course it doesn't work yet because we need to set the reference to the um, text of the score and the time left so it's this one And now let's try again it works we can see that the time is decreasing 
and we can now uh, attach uh, the this method to the uh, balloon so as soon as the balloon is hit a few small improvements I found this sound for a rocket which is I think much cooler than the one we used before to this uh, sound um, folder and uh, I'm using them now so after we've done that we can remove that rocket uh, launcher because we only needed it for the sound so we can remove this from the assets this will uh, make uh, things uh, load faster when we uh, load the project um, also uh, remember that we used uh, the template for URP to create this project the template comes with a few settings you can find them in the settings folder there is different uh, three different profiles for the URP we can see in the uh, project settings on the graphics which one is in use now it's the URP high fidelity so if you take a look at the settings for the URP high fidelity you will see that the max distance of the shadows is 150 um, now we have a very large um, area and with the plane we can see very far so the 150 is not enough if I increase it to 1500 you can see the difference now we can actually see the shadows on the uh, the trees and it will give us a very different look so what we need to do is to find a little bit the value for the um, shadow that's the most appropriate I think we want to see at least as far as this maybe even this okay let's go for 850 I don't want to increase it too much because it affects performance um, of course the engine needs to uh, calculate the position of all the shadows on the terrain so the larger terrain you take the lower performance you will have now in order to make the scoring work we change the balloon script I've added uh, a reference to the, the game script that we have in our scene uh, on the awake function we just set uh, the, it to uh, the right value you can find it over here always it's a static uh, place so we can refer to it like this and then uh, in the trigger enter so when we hit a balloon we are going to call the increase score function on it I only need to just uh, add this import and we can save the script we are now going to create a few variations of the balloon so the game will look a bit more interesting so I'm going to copy this prefab a few times I'm going to open it and then replace some of the colors of this sphere And after that, uh, we'll go to the uh, spawn script and add the uh, new prefabs. And then we'll have different colored balloons in our game. Just a few details. I've added point line to the um, wings of the plane to make it look a bit more interesting so I've added uh, 
point lines under this uh, main root of the uh, the plane and then uh, I uh, positioned the, the light like this give it the right intensity and I found out that um, this is actually the light that I want so that makes a plane stick out a bit more another thing that uh, I've noticed when you run the game with a lot of trees on the terrain you see that the frame rate you can press this stats button here the frame rate is uh, very low it's about 10 frames per second if we have a lot of trees on the terrain and we are looking at the trees we're looking at the sky the frame rate goes a little bit up to 30 frames per second but so these trees affect performance of the game very much so what I'm gonna do now is uh, go to the terrain and recreate the trees with uh, the largest possible size and then I'm gonna replace these trees and I'm gonna use slightly less let's say for example 80,000 and because they're larger they're still covering a lot of the terrain and this will give us a better performance so let's check it out it used to be 10 and now uh, it's about 30 so that's uh, a large improvement okay now let's create an end screen we're going to the canvas uh, hit shift and F go into 2d mode and now we can draw a panel on here which we will use and display when we are in game over mode so I'm gonna create a panel let's resize it a little bit and we'll move it a little bit down okay something like this so let's change the color to black and increase the alpha value something like this and now we're gonna add um, text to this just the game over text um, go to the rect tool to create the proper size for the this text we're setting the font size to auto size again and let's choose a different size uh, font this one um, also gonna uh, use a gradient again maybe something like this and um, use the outline okay I think let's first um, disable the terrain because I can't see very clearly how it looks that's better so now let's 
something like this um, and now we're gonna copy this text and put um, a bunch of zeros in here we're gonna use this as uh, the score value which we will uh, dynamically set and this game over text will be static by the way let's center this uh, but this one should be left aligned because we want this distance always to be the same and we can change this uh, font so it will stick out a bit and call it uh, game over score actually we're going to use a reference to this so it doesn't really matter what we call it now but it's just to make clear uh, what's in here I changed the colors a little bit and now it looks like this so this is fine so now I'm gonna disable this panel by default and we're gonna enable it as soon as the game is over uh, we can also enable this again now go back to 3d mode so now let's uh, create a code to uh, show the game over screen For the game over mode we are using game states so we are creating two game states we are either playing the game or we are in the game over mode and we uh, store this game state in this game script there's only one f in this uh, scene so you can refer to it from anywhere and um, I've also uh, created uh, references to the game over text and the game over panel so we can enable the game over panel and we can fill this uh, game over score field with the proper score so um, if the, the time uh, left is uh, less than zero or zero then we set the game state to game over so then the game is over so when the timer runs out the game will be over and we will change the game state and when we change the game state to game over we will set the score text to the current score and uh, we will uh, enable this, uh, this panel to show the, the score so let's uh, see if it works we can test this by temporarily setting the uh, game time to 4 seconds and then uh, we need to set the references on the game script to the panel and to the game over score and now if you run the game after four seconds the timer will expire and we should see the uh, game over screen now after we have uh, enter the game over mode we need to switch back to playing after the player has pressed the enter key so then we transfer to this game state again and we do that from within the airplane controller so we add a reference to the game script uh, which we uh, set over here and uh, we also add uh, an airplane spawn position so we can respawn the plane when a new game is starting so this is the code that's checking for the uh, enter key being pressed and if we are in the game over mode then we're going to reset the game and resetting the game consists of setting the state to playing again and also setting the position of this airplane back to the spawn position and uh, rotated to the original 
rotation so now we can um, go to the uh, propelled controller uh, actually we should add the spawn position so let's do that So I've chosen to um, set this with the reference. So I can call it anything I like, but let's call it airplane spawn position. And then uh, in the propelled controller we're gonna set it to here but now if we go and we press shift F this is the current spawn position actually the spawn position should be this one uh, so we can just copy this copy the position and paste it in here And now this is our spawn position. So let's check if it works. So after three seconds, we get in the game over state. And then if we press enter, we start over at the original position. So it works. Not only when the timer is over, we want to end the game, but also when you crash the plane. There is already code here that uh, is executed when the airplane is crashing, so when the colliders are hit. Uh, we can add our own code over here and we use that to set the game state to game over. But you see that uh, a lot of things are done here during the crash we need to reset all these values back to the original value once we restart the game so in the reset function reset game function we also need to add this part so then everything is set back to the initial state and we can start the game again there are a few things i forgot first of all when we restart the game we also need to set the engine volume back because it has been uh, set to zero during the crash uh, we set it back to 0 0.4 because that's the value that we are using over here as well so uh, and also uh, when the plane is crashing the colliders are disabled over here so we should enable them again but we can also just cancel this uh, disabling because they can stay enabled it's no problem and now uh, we've also um, added uh, a crash effect and uh, a sound when we're crashing so I've created this uh, crash sound game object over here just like the engine sound and rocket sound and I've added the sound to it it's this sound so uh, and the effect I have uh, taken from uh, the uh, JMO assets package it's the nuke effect Finally, let's enable the collision between the airplane and the balloon. And now if we crash into something, we will hear a sound, see the visual effect. Like that. And if you hit the enter key, you will start over. Okay, so here you can see the final result.
We now have a fully functional game that we can use as a starting point. There are a million ways to extend this game, so enjoy and see you in the next one.